hi everyone and welcome to tonight's episode of culture of paint we're going to be taking a look at what's caught our eye over the last few weeks in the miniatures painting world for our main topic we're going to discuss sort of getting derailed with hobby projects barriers and things we can come up against and perhaps a few different ways that we've come up with to try and get through those and get projects completed and then we'll close out the show as normal taking a look at what the paint cultists have been up to a culture of paints aimed at a mature audience so we might use explicit language and discuss adult themes now let's talk about paint and we are back i think seeing you there seeing the chat there lovely and let's see if the slides show up this time i think we've done the last couple where they sort of come in slightly late on haven't they right let's get cracking not that i'm not blaming you matt or anything you're wonderful sorry hi everyone uh, uh, it's henry here as usual and joining me as usual are andy matt and rich good evening gents how are we good, hey, good stuff definitely not arguing about tech there it's all good. Nice to see so many of you in the chat as well. We have in a natter about wanting Forge World to bring back busts, which would be pretty cool, and the 54 mil models. Well, if you are looking, Elliot, for excellent 54 millimeter models and busts, then uh, Dagard shipping soon, so they'll be in the shops. Please, please don't buy any more. I yeah. can't pack any more. Uh, <laughs> Don't buy anything. Steve and as lo right, love to see you all. So let's crack on. It's been three weeks, I think, since the last show. Very sorry about that. I was rather under the weather last week, uh, so we opted to delay by a week. Um, we had that brilliant show last time with Mark on, so I hope uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. I know we did. We've been starting to put the feelers out, to see who else we can get on to have a have a natter with about their influence on the, on the hobby. Um, but let's see what's been going on on the various social medias and releases then. So what's up first, Matt? So oh, first up is, this is yours, Rich. Ah, uh, me. Um, so yeah, this is my pick. There's it's been three weeks, so there's been a lot. There's been quite a few different bits that have caught my eye from various people. Um, but this is one that I, saw, I think yesterday was the first time I saw them. Uh, Kill Team is now live and kicking and with us. So uh, there's been some fantastic work done from various people, specifically Henry's uh, commandos. I really enjoyed as well. But this I really liked. Uh, just the, his style, I love. He's one of my favourite painters, and I think for a kill team, it's really striking. Uh, I just love the colours he's used and the way he's applied them. To be honest, I think it's one of those things with the kill team stuff. We're going to see a hell of a lot of them. Like a lot of people got in, uh, getting into the idea of it. So seeing some that really catch catch caught my eye, I was yeah, love mm. I think they're great. The on the kits fab as well. You can yeah. So all of the pretty much all of them make two builds, and the heads are the heads are funny. They're they're I suppose they're a sort of like a ball and socket. In you sort of got like an earthworm gym nubbin on their torso, yeah, sort of with an opening in, and then the heads fit around it. Um, they're quite unusual, but they're not. They're not in that hard to little tweak and, and you can sort of head yeah. swap. Um, and I'm really hoping, because I know, Andy, you, you did the Creed from the box, didn't you? And those heads are just, like, easy to swap in and out, right, if you wanted to kit bash and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I'm really, really hoping we're now going to start seeing that more from GW kits. Like, we went all the way from, like, Lego, didn't we, with the Space Marines with, you know, stick them on in this yeah, bit, yeah. to the, you can only build these one way kind of hoping now we're gonna gonna meet somewhere in in, in the middle with it really um, hard to get that balance isn't oh, it oh mass massively but that creed kit i mean it's there's three or so builds isn't there for nearly every every mini in it um so yeah it's well impressed right balance. like and and there's enough options that it doesn't matter if the poses are repeating if you mm. see because I, mean, I think yeah um, if there's enough options, then it's fine to do it that way. But you could probably do three squads, and it looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a very hard balance to strike. And overall, the models are definitely way cooler now. But it's hard when they're so distinctive to see those repeats. Like um, I just built the Chaos Terminators, and one of my favourite kits to build. It was really easy. They're beautifully done. I've done two squads and I don't think I could do three because they're too distinctive uh, and you can't do that much with them. So you're like, all right, like they're brilliant. 
but I feel limited to 10. So that's a tough one, isn't it? But I guess for an elite, or at least in the background, I don't know what they're like in the in the actual game. At least in the background, sort of 10 is probably about about all you need, isn't it, for sort of yeah. distinctiveness? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely right. fine, but it's just it was my most recent observation. Mm. I sort of built my second unit and I was like, that's brilliant. There's, they're different enough, but three isn't possible. You know, it feels like there's a limit uh, with some of the kits um, mm. and things like that. And they're just, you know, like the lightning claws, there's only one set of lightning claws. And they're a very distinctive uh, pose and mm. you couldn't do a whole unit of them. So everything's better, but there's there's limitations, right? And it's a, a trade-off, I think, for some of these really dynamic, cool kits. But the Kill Team ones, both of them are really good, I think. Mm. Yeah. I'm really tempted by the Commandos just because it's the same sort of scheme to my AOS Orcs. And I love painting that, that <laughs> red and green. And I just keep looking at see. I didn't really like them, but I liked them when they came out. But I was never, I was never like I really want to do them. I just thought, oh, I'll never get around to doing those. But they're cool. But the more and more I see them, the more I'm like, oh, there's only like ten of them. That's very appropriate for this week's topic, which we'll get. <laughs> I don't need just notes. It's, yeah, sorry, Mac. The goblin in this kit, he has the snorkel face, doesn't he? Yeah. The, the grot. Yeah, is the grot. Incredible. That Again, two favorite. options. You can have snorkel, scuba, grot. Or you can have um, the, the other one. I built the other one. There's uh, going around on the socials today was uh, someone had done a little screenshot or, you know, photo of um, one of the little short story text boxes from the from the Kill Team book. And it's all about that little grot. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty sad, man. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty upsetting. Um, but yeah, he's, a, he's an amazing model. And again, I think he's three, three bits. Um, really obvious, and then obviously one of the the grapple hook hooks is a separate bit because mm. yeah. you know why not make him super easy to put together, and then you have to try and do this tiny yeah, little hook, on. you know? Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I mean it, we, we say it quite a lot, don't we? But the 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 way they are engineering kits now, Games Workshop is it's bananas um, to put to put stuff together. Um, but I feel it's definitely benefited models like these orcs. Because if, if you mm. think back to what we used to get when you got a, a largely sort of flesh on show type model. So whether that was a, a Chaos Marauder or, or an orc or whatever, they never really suited that stick the arms on, you know, Lego style, did they? Yeah. Um, and we saw it years ago when they when they re-released or when they when they completely redid the ogre range for Warhammer Fantasy, yeah, and they did that slightly different sort of don't know how to describe it really, sort of dovetail almost joint for the for the shoulder and the arms. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. To just to just to allow them to sort of I guess get delts that look vaguely like they'd work. Yeah. Um, but Still I feel genius. like you know we're seeing it now. E even when we you look back at the you know some of the the more recent chaos kits but then once they switched over to that style of no we're going to sculpt things slightly more um restrictive i guess is the word mm. i think it's it's ended up with much better looking models yeah i, I think that's a whole episode there that we've I, i've already scribbled that down mate yes yeah, i want to <laughs> let's move on <laughs> that's definitely a, <laughs> a future show um so what's uh nice choice rich basically picked your orcs painted by someone else yeah your skin. But better. Love it. Love it. Right. What's that next, Matt? Ah. So I saw this a couple of weeks ago, actually, and I immediately sort of saved it to, to use for pick. Um, partly because I think it's really fitting with Krieg coming out. Still can't quite believe we've got plastic Krieg. What a uh, world. What a world to be in. Yeah. <laughs> it's just bonkers, right? Um, I really loved this Commissar model, this Sever Severina rain model when yeah, they when they brought it out. Um, I actually ordered one and the store I ordered it off messed the order up. So I was a little bit frustrated at that, but I love them anyway. Um, it's not bitter. Um, I will pick one up, but I just think what, what a great conversion. Like we talked a few shows ago about kit bash conversion type thing. And this is just, this looks like a model, right? This looks mm -hmm. like an out of the box yeah. model. And that's when you know you've, you've absolutely nailed it, isn't it? Nice paint job too. Lovely paint job. It's just, again, it's, 
we talk sometimes, don't we, about if you were to introduce someone to a game, what model would you show them to sort of try and get them to understand it in, in a one -er? Um yeah. And I feel like you could show someone this and they'd get 40k. Hmm. Yeah. Um, it's Future sort of, soldier, dystopian world. You yeah. Get that, that Gas mask, recognisable things from the armour, but yeah. definitely futuristic. Bam, bam, bam. It's all um, there, isn't it? So, yeah. That's, that's, and it's just reminded me, I really do want to try and hunt this model down and get a hold of it. Um, partly because of one of the things we're going to talk about later. Does that hat come with the gas mask face or is that the actual Severine hat as well? I can't, I didn't look that far into it because we, we had a Kree Commissar. commissar. I um, believe it is the Kree Commissar right. head, I think. But I sit, might be wrong. I think it done. might be. But yeah, you're right, exactly. If you can't tell. Someone tell us in the comments. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness, though, but dropping that in with those plastic Kriegs. Oh. Yeah, because it's definitely not a plastic Krieg head. Like the actual Krieg gas mac isn't the plastic one, it's mm. the old one, the resin mm. one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because as I say, I saw this a few weeks ago before yeah. before the box had, had, had was in the wild, as it were. I mean, um, I was just up at Warhammer World yesterday and I saw, you know, they got that huge Krieg diorama that's in there. Mm. The, the, uh, the exhibition oh. i'm hoping that they redo something similar like that but with the new stuff mm. that would be epic mm. I remember talking to to the the manager up there that, that deals with all the displays and everything and sort of how they he said that the all of those big dioramas is is one person like that's their job like they got a like when they were creating the new exhibition hall like everyone was like right Bob, you're going to do a Krieg diorama. It's got to fit in this space. Off you go. Was it that chap Owen Patton for a while? He's a really good hobbyist. I think he did displays for a bit and then he mm. does design. He he's, was fantastic. And he's been there for a very long time, hasn't he? Forge World largely, I think. And then scenery. I think Owen Patton did the Somortalis scenery. I think it was. Um, he he um, just did some great stuff. I remember yeah. he did something to do with the displays. And I was like... Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think he's a big, well. big treaded. Are they? Yeah, there's a job up for that role. <laughs> That'd be a pretty fun job, man. Not gonna lie. I don't know how intimidated that would be. Is that right? We want you to paint, want you to paint 350 creeds. <laughs> like, oh fuck. Better than 350 slash demonettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just white and wash, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. Spray it pink, bit of contrast. And that's it. Love it. Oh, the people, the chat are loving it. They're talking about all sorts of things I don't understand. So, might as well carry on. What's the next slide? So, the next two slides are kind of a joint uh, pick for all of us because we all wanted to see this. <laughs> ah. Here it is. Yeah. Yep. Quite I mean, a bit. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. all right. With with the shows being cancelled this last eighteen months has sort of robbed robbed people of getting to see these sorts of things. Um, this, this was an entry, right? And they mm. made, I think they basically got to a point where they've had it done for ages, and they were like, well, "There's shows aren't happening." Mm. Uh, and I feel the same way, like keeping stuff. So they obviously just it's going to the collector, I think. So they're just like, "Yeah, here it is. It's not going to be in a show." Um, but yeah, amazing team effort. Uh, so the sculptor was Alejandro, Alejandro Munoz, yeah. who sculpts all the cult of paint miniatures. If you didn't know, <laughs> he might be doing some for us now, and he's not bad. Uh, and actually, we got David to paint one of our box arts as well. So it's a, a combo we love, and you can see why in this mini. And uh, GW, why aren't you making busts? Come on, let's go. I used to. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I want to see this in real life. Sell, wouldn't it? Yeah, I yeah. desperately want to see this in real life because I want to see what that looks like. I, I hope he mm. does bring it to some shows. Like, and uh, it was for a character, Horror, yeah. but yeah, hopefully mm. we do. I'd love to see it in a in a GD cabinet just because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's got it's just a very standout piece, isn't it? Mm. And also considering it's not. I think I still consider Age of Sigma a relatively new sort of setting, mm -hmm. even though it's, gosh, six six years old, something like that, seven years old. Um, 
but yeah the, you you know this piece would have caused a lot of chat whatever show it had gone into don't you yeah i'd like it to have gone into gd and not placed and then everyone <laughs> well and then gone on like one one monty oh, yeah, SMC and, and smc and all the rest of it i think it would have it would have placed in open category wouldn't it i think yeah absolutely possibly yeah i, I think the the whole sort of 3d printing stuff is going to be interesting at that specific competition mm. Especially Whether... with the gap we've had of competitions. It's like we've had two years off competitions and how much 3D printing stuff has come mm. on in two years. It's mm. like, I feel like with everything in life, it's like a big, big old books mark and then we've skipped like a bunch of stuff yeah. and and what people can enter and will enter will be different. And I think there's going to be an adjustment period because, you know, how many people are going to have basically custom 3D printed stuff? Mm. And it's like... If you haven't bought it from another company, then you can enter it. If it's a product for sale, you can't enter it. And how do how do the judges know? Yeah. You know how do they, how do they disqualify stuff? Because if there's some guy who's, you know, stealing IP and selling it, then that's not cool. But if a guy's got it sculpted, it's a one-off. That is cool in a competition. Yeah. Uh, Gondim specifically, but. How are they going to work that out? Basically? I mean, there used to be teams. Like, you used to be able to do team stuff. There was usually like one person would sculpt it, one person would paint it, and but that sort of went away. But sort but of that now was we've... before three D sculpting, because yeah. that would be one off. That wouldn't be replicated. That would be is... like a handmade it's sculpt. Difficult. But but I guess what Matt's saying is that it's it's still ultimately sculpted by someone else. Mm. So would that actually? kill it dead before you even got to the, no, the that's fact that it was you but know that, that's um, fine but I, I think i don't know i think with the way that 3d printing has progressed stuff like this while it will enter i don't think stuff like this will ever place what do you think because of like conscious bias <sighs> yeah i yeah. don't know no, I, I I, not from the judges i think it'd be more of like a a higher up decision line yeah because you know 3d so. stuff has won in the past but it's never gone in a white dwarf magazine right yeah because i think it's too much of a discouragement or not or not even a discouragement an encouragement for people to potentially make their own thing it's it's basically saying we're okay with you making your own mm. but they, are, with our IP. they are in the rules they are mm. they do yeah. say my, my point is that this this is obviously a 3d file right so apart from the fact that these guys know it's illegal, so they're not going to do it, but this can be printed by a million times, right? Mm. It's just a file on its computer at the moment. Mm. The only reason they're not doing that is because it's illegal. Mm. Um, but what I'm saying is you could buy something from an online store, that's a, that's a shop, and enter it into GD, and they won't know if it's bought from an online store or it's a one-off, because yeah. one-offs cool, multiple copies aren't cool. Mm. So it's like they don't, mm. they don't know. So that's why I'm thinking it must be tough for them, basically. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't want this, to be this in seems position. like another. This, this seems like another episode we've just come up with on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a three weeks off. We want to chat. That's what it is. Yeah. We've got stuff to say. Let's let do us, another one. It's let really... us know in the let us know in the chat if that is something you'd like us to get a bit more deep dive on for an episode. Sort of our experience of uh, of judging and of of how comps go together, and then a little bit of you know conspiracy theory. About how they won't, they, they just won't do hats it. Out. Yeah, get the tinfoil hats. Three, three D printed. Um, yeah, let's move on. But amazing. Yeah, we. All, I think at least two of us picked this for this week, and then I think the other two were like, "Oh well, obviously that's going up." So, you know, it's a, a, a little extra. So, We've got loads of extras because I was greedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too. Next up is. Yay! Oh. So that's that's all four of us, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Matt's yeah. getting a WhatsApp screw. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was pissed off about this. This is the first time ever I was Johnny on the spot with sending my pick over to Matt. And it wasn't a Space Marine or anything yeah. 40k. It was like a proper model. Already been fucking, picked. Yeah, he already been picked. Yeah, mate. Well, we said, didn't we, that basically every time Lucas does a sculpt, it, it, it's, yeah. it's the best. Mm -hmm. Like... And um, I love everything he does objectively, but like 
sometimes you know if it's a dwarf or something then i'm not interested but this one <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is amazing can't wait i i think this is his best one since the witches or possibly no his best one since the um american wise uh, native american yeah wise, wise woman, woman. Yeah. wise woman's the peak for me um this th this is my favorite one he's ever done i just love mm. a goblin Bio goblins are great so if you if you went into my head and and pulled out the definition of fantasy goblin and put it into a model that's what the model would look like. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, right? And it goes on the side. Yeah, third of, third of third of September. Midnight. Yeah, midnight third of September. Oh, that's you got Tomorrow two days. Night. Yeah, forty-eight hours. You can order it, and the I'm link have to buy a few, will and I... be in the description. Yep. Um, that's the way Lucas sells his models. Yep. Um, go and support him because it's, it's pretty special, you know. Yeah. To be around. Is it weird that I just want like a massive piece of artwork of that, even <laughs> just in that, not even painted, just like that? It's pretty you'd cool, not isn't it? A sculpture and not paint it, wouldn't it? Like you'd have that on your mm. shelf, not paint. Oh, that's it. yeah. I wouldn't paint it because I would fuck it up. So I think I would, a lot of people I would have do that, that just as it is. It's kind mm. of. I think he yeah. wants people like you, you. Obviously, he wants people to paint his miniatures, but everyone that buys it just no, I can't paint it. It's, it's too nice to paint. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd absolutely balls that up. That, that'd stay as is. You got to buy two: much. one to paint and one to keep. I want to ruin. Yeah. <laughs> fair. It's absolutely fair. But yeah, amazing work, as per usual. Can and I? still the only non-painter to have won. Whatever that Monty Award is, right? Like best in show thing. Best, best of show, not a painted mm. model, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's yeah. Like Great picks, everyone. There's, there's loads more. I haven't done any mine. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't gone to Andy's yet. So, next up is that's me. Have you seen this? Is it? No. Yeah. Yeah, I follow him, Liam. He's good. I thought this conversion was fantastic. The head, the helmet in particular is so cool. Um, uh, I also have to say I don't like salamanders until now. Uh, this is this is like the coolest salamander collection. I think I'm like, yeah, this is really cool. But yeah, I love this account. Amazing marine conversions. As we've said before, we've seen so many marines, and this is yet another take. Amazing execution. So uh, yeah, that's it. It's just brilliant. Uh, I thought you guys probably had all seen it, but I love it. That yeah. Looks great. That's this the presumably it's that special character, lad, isn't it? Vol Vulcan. And Heston. Yeah. Heston. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's, every, the painting's amazing. Converting's amazing. Sometimes you don't get both. Sometimes you get good converters, good painters, but both is a bit of a force, right? Mm. If you're uh, if you're speaking about focus when it comes to a project, if you look at Liam's army, every is every model in his army is like this, and it's all mm. got like custom like shin pads custom helmets custom pads he's and he's done it consistent consistently throughout the whole thing all he does is salamanders and it's fucking amazing like the army does look great yes, really really it's, good it's insane isn't it nice yeah. well as usual all the accounts everything we feature tonight will be down in the description so you can go give them a follow um but you said you've been greedy and this isn't your only pick i put loads unbelievable loads there we go next. Hollywood. Next up is. <laughs> We're having too long in between. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this one. This is ridiculous. Tim yeah. Timothy, what's his name? Chalamet. That's it. New June. I don't know who it is, but it's Timothy Chalamet. New June, yeah. The face. Oh, God, it's is... pretty funny. There's already stuff out for it. Yeah. <laughs> the movie hasn't dropped yet. Oh, the movie's yeah. been pushed what's back. What's the one. movie? Uh, June. 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 The new yeah, one. he's the new. What's the what's the main character in June? I can't remember his name. Patrick Stewart. Yeah, Patrick Stewart was in the original June <laughs> film. <laughs> he was Gurney, wasn't he, in the uh, in the original one? I think it was. Yeah. But yeah, this is pretty cool, and this is just a great example, isn't it, of, of the again three. I'm assuming 3D printed. Um, he's, he's an just, insane sculptor, like insanely good. So is this as this person sculpted and painted this? No, who painted it, Matt? Do you remember? Uh, I can find it now. I remember. The top That's of my head. the sculptor's account. 
And right. so he's an amazing sculptor, and uh, I can't remember who painted it off the top of my head, but the paint job's ridiculously good. Mm. I was going to say the paint painting is not bad. It's just yeah. it's nice. It's quite subtle, isn't it? Yeah, I love the skin. I think it's fantastic. And uh, yeah, a guy called John Chan is the, the That's painter. It. John Chan. He uh, is. Oh, that rings the best. Best. Oh, Jeez. is he the guy who paints really good faces? He well, does the bit slightly big scale faces. No, like Brad Pitt from Fury and stuff. Different, different guy. He, oh. he we featured him before because he did that soldier with the sunlight hitting him. Mm, right. And it's like the first time someone's pulled it off. But John Chan is one of he's one of the best best painters I think. Um, yeah. Doesn't really social much. Um, I think he just basically posts on his personal Facebook, and yeah. that's about it. No social uh, accounts. Cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If you if you go and look up any of June, the main character Paul in 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 June, played by this Timothy guy, is some. Um, that's that's it's really shockingly yeah. bang on. It's really I mean, good. That's the face. <laughs> the, the blends in the face. It has that particularly uh, around the that area, mm, right? The, facial expression. I yeah. Don't know, I don't know if it was like intended, but like, do you ever? Some of the, like the Da Vinci paintings have this like effect, like it's called like blurring. I think they call it, mm, where mm, mm. it's kind of got a bit of that in it, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. If you look at his other stuff, you can see it's like fully intended because that guy's got absurd skill and he pulls off stuff that I've seen attempted and no one else has pulled off, like like the sunlight going through the woods effect, like. Mm. Uh, I enjoy, how low, I enjoy how low key about it is as well as just like does his hobby, puts it on his own Facebook and like that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's just like whatever. Uh, no biggie, oh, no. man. Should we do my last pick, Matt? Yeah. Fucking so, hell, how many have you got? Last one. Three weeks. You got three picks. Tough. It took too long. Oh yeah, because I saw this. This is just cool. Uh that yeah, Will, Will's uh doing some really cool stuff. I had him on here before. And I just saw this and thought this had to go on because it's just brilliant. Colour, light. It's pretty amazing, really, isn't it? Presentation overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That marble is bonkers. <laughs> yeah, proper marble. Like, no, uh, no, no nonsense marble that we've seen way too much of. Very nice. Very and this was that mini done on Art of Brom, right? Yeah. yeah. Based off, sorry, based off Art of Brom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've seen quite a few versions, and I think this is easily my favourite. Even the blood on the bottom of the pillar is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love it. Love everything about that. Mm. The the red cloak is just super stark against that black background. <sighs> Everything's just great, isn't it? It's just uh, I think we'll have like... that on the uh, miniatures is our uh, mm -hmm. chat whenever we do that. Yeah, because it does. It looks like a painting to me. It's mm. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Skills to pay the bills. Very cool. There you go. There's my quick picks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, chat are loving it. Someone's saying that they're gonna keen to get their first bust. Well, you've never picked a better time. This is an amazing one coming out nearly every week at the minute. Yeah. Um, still on oh, the Aussies are here. Hi Adam. Wake, waking up? Yeah, waking up. Very nice. Have we got any more picks, Matt? No, Matt, well, that was it. <laughs> <That's> it. Crikey. <laughs> well, I think those are pretty good picks. It's obviously been an excellent couple of weeks. Uh, really has, actually. Would we, have been, would we have been due any comps in the last couple of weeks if things were normal? Uh, no, nah, but we're just about to come up to comp season. Right. Because we're like a month away from Monty. SMC Monty double, right. which is my... Right. And then you have the break for the GD double. So it's kind of like... I mean, potentially yeah. SMC is still happening. That They haven't said it's off yet. They have. Oh, yeah, they, they have. Oh, well, we I'm got an email it. through because, yeah, we were meant to be at it. So it's if, if, it is, well. if it is happening, we're not there. <laughs> That's yeah. a shame. So, yeah. It'll be Ask there. Uh, Kerim is asking in the chat, what's our favourite airbrush? Well, that would be our signature airbrush. Great. Show it off. <laughs> By uh, product placement by Harder and Steenbeck. Yeah, someone's got to have one on them. It's black, so it's there you go. Beautiful. That's our favorite airbrush. And if you want to know why, we've done a billion videos about it, or at least three. 
Cool. Let's get on <laughs> to the. I don't think we've got a meme of the week, so let's get straight on to the main topic. Oh. And we did. Uh, we've got to this, organize it. This we've had three weeks. You're too busy That's picking. Meme. <laughs> too busy picking pretty pictures. It was the uh, Marlow meme. We just about this topic, which would have been perfect. <laughs> well, oh, what a shame that didn't make it. Oh, in. I should, yeah, that's gonna definitely get in, uh, get in brought out quite a few times. I think so. Don't worry. I was gonna say this is this is gonna be another one of those fucking topics where I just get bagged on for an it. It could be rich. I'm not gonna lie. It could. Yeah, be. but you're so funny. Um, so, <laughs> so what is this topic that we're going on about? So, I think it's a discussion a lot of us have uh, with mates, with online groups, or all, all the rest of it. But this. Just this this constant struggle of trying to marry up all the things you want to do and get painted and all of that and all the things you actually manage to get painted uh, and completed and done or, you know, sculpted or, or whatever it is you want, you want to do within the hobby. Um, and we actually felt there may well be a, a show within it and we can talk about sort of the, the things that us four often come up against. Uh, I threw the question out to the Patreons earlier. They fired back with a ton. Um, and then also, so it's not just, horribly depressing um we'll sort of go through ways we think we can we can get over some of those humps and rescue the odd project before it goes in the stripping pile or on ebay or or wherever or in the bin um so uh, and uh for this one we decided to do very little prep in the sense of we don't really know what each other's going to come up with um so i thought it might be a bit more interesting to see if there was a common one but having asked the patrons about it I've got about eight or nine answers, and they're all different. Um, so yeah, I think I think this could be this could be quite interesting. So I'm going to throw you under the bus straight away, Rich. What is something I wonder? What is something that regularly <laughs> would you say you often get derailed from a project? Uh, Just move I the mean, camera, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. If I could, if you could pan sort of that way a bit, then yeah. So considering my nickname is the Hobby Butterfly. Um, Rick, yeah, I think ben called you. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that I get distracted in moments of um, daylight. I don't know, moments of daylight. Yeah, if I'm in, uh, yeah, a, a, a random blast of inspiration will pop up for an idea, and it's the only thing that I can I can think about when it comes to hobby. And all I want to do is get on with it and do that, and nothing will stop me really from doing that bit until it's done and then uh then and the next hobby idea will pop up and then i'll do that as well so yeah i get distracted by just about fucking everything <laughs> <laughs> well think of this like your intervention then rich this year. yeah pretty much this we is my just goes, we'll just go through all of the things that derail you. well one that's come up and i know a couple of the patrons mentioned it and i think andy you've mentioned this is just the the almost seemingly endless every week there's something amazing new oh, coming out mate it's horrible it's actually horrible <laughs> it's honestly what would we well i mean it was dominion wasn't it and everyone's painting that and then then there's kill team and you're like cool well, I, haven't, I haven't even built my dominion set so let's get this kill team set it's just too much and, and is, is that are you finding that because obviously it sounds very sort of first world problem but what what particularly about that is it that causes the problem for you is it that you you really thrive off sort of buzz and not been done yet and, or, and that kind of thing me you're talking yeah um i think i think it's like you can start something that's cool and then something new comes out and the old thing's still cool mm. But you might want to do that new thing more. And um, yeah, it's happened to me recently, which has really annoyed me because I've been like, you know, started doing Sisters of Battle. And I was like, this is great for me. I've come up with a quick scheme. It's brilliant. I love Sisters of Battle. Finally, I'm getting around to them. And then you get Plastic Death Core Creek. And it's like, oh, th they're better than these. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, um, I think it's really hard when you're an adult that and for, I think for a lot of people they can probably afford most things that come out mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people are lucky to be in that position and you just you just do it don't you so mm -hmm. um I mean I've airbrushed and base coated my creed I'm doing something different now because something new come up come along right it's just like 
yeah it's um it's just it's really tough it's lovely how many cool things are coming out but i think it's only natural to want to do new stuff because uh you know it takes months to do an army right and how are you supposed to, it's very hard to stick to that army for an entire six months like can you imagine you imagine not buying anything new from gw for a year like you, it would just be hard wouldn't it <laughs> it's like mm. doing the same color scheme over and over again it's just <laughs> just hard i i think it's uh it's testament to the quality and quantity of new releases that like we've been painting for years now andy and you've always been so good at like no i'm doing this and that's what i'm doing and like the amount like even the last like couple of months you've been um and ah and about a few different projects um, i think it's like it's, welcome to my world because <laughs> like i think it's I, such I an investment i don't have a 40k army so that's something i want because i've got an age of sigma army so i want a 40k army and um and I think that's the difficulty because I paint one thing and I'm like, this is brilliant. I, this is the army I want. And then repeating that loads of times. So you mean by like you'll paint uh, one, one model from that army? Yeah. And then you'll want to do the army? Well, I've done it three times in a row, which mm. is why. So I did system battle tutorial for Patreon and it was so quick and easy. I was like, this is the right army for me because this is the e the gold metallic order of the golden light i was like this is the easiest color scheme i've ever come up with uh, this this has got to be my army started working on 20 sisters did all the worst bit like the gold the black uh and then that's it and then plastic creed come out uh did a creed for a tutorial started working on 10 airbrushed transfers they're in the same box as the dead sisters and uh, <laughs> and now now I'm doing Sons of Horus, and I done did Malagurst, and I was like, I love this scheme, and then I've done a Contemptor, and uh, I cannot just, I can't do it again, that's enough now. Mm. <laughs> like, I have to complete a project, it's driving me nuts, so I just... Why, why, does it drive, why does it drive you nuts, though? Like, what is it about it that stresses you out? Because the amount of time I've put into Sisters and Cree, if I'd done that in one project, I'd have an army. But what I have is four <laughs> bits of an army. I've got built models that have cost me a lot of money. I haven't finished them and I can't use them for a game. And I have spent the amount of money and time needed for an army, yet I don't have an army. So I can't actually do the end goal, which is to roll a dice. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's, that's the bit that's the bit that bugs me about it is if if you you did it once, like you put in a photo in our, one of our WhatsApp groups where it was a guy who painted like 25,000 points of orcs or something. And you just put, this would be Rich's army if he could stick to anything. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> like, I can get things done like pretty quickly when I want to. But that's that I think for me is one of my problems is I can do things quite quickly. So, go, oh, fuck it. It'll only be like one of my days off this week i'll quickly smash out this model or whatever I go, oh that's really cool i'll do a few of them and then i do a few of them and then i get a new project and if i could put all of these masses and masses of models that you can't see on my left hand side and they could all from the same army it would be the biggest coolest looking army ever but it's just not <laughs> I think that, and like, all that if you if you if you like for me if i paint a model it's it just looks cool kind of regardless and i think that's for everyone because like if you've done it it's it's really nice feeling because you know you've you it's something you've achieved it looks cool and you can always imagine more so like i did one gold sister and i loved how it looked and i just wanted 60 of them so i think whenever we paint like one model we're probably likely to be like happy with it proud of it or imagine more of it and then you like your mind wonders of going down that road of having an army, but actually got to resist sometimes because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really hard. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like scratching the itch, isn't it? If you, if you can produce something that you're happy with, proud of, and you enjoy it, enjoy looking at it, you enjoy the process. I think to a degree, if you want to play games, there's a, there's a, a, a degree of telling yourself that that's enough. Like you might have a little bit more in the tank, but telling yourself that that's enough. Or for me, refocusing that energy into a current project. So like when we saw the little hints about the Black Templars coming out, 
I love a black Templar. I straight away went into, oh my God, that'd be amazing. What's a really cool recipe for really simple, but really quick black armor. And I did a black Templar in like a couple of days, just in the evenings. And I loved it. And it was amazing. And then I was like, right, I'll do another one. And then I was like, well, I've got a blood angels army. Mm-hmm. I can do a uh, death company. It's mm-hmm. the same black color scheme. So I, I basically re jigged my energy into painting like a quick black armor into right. Yes. I'll just do a new squad of five death company. I like that, mate. That's that's there we go. There's tip number one. Uh, that that <laughs> definitely resonates to me. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. If you you do a one off that does doesn't go anywhere, but you bloody love the scheme, yeah, use the scheme somewhere, right? Then at least that's yeah. not time wasted. And I'm not yeah. saying that painting one model is time wasted. I'm not saying that not finishing a model is necessarily time wasted. Um, I'm going to try and be very fence city for most that was, of this that was my discussion. Point, is you like. You need to just compartmentalize. I'm doing this as one model. So like for me, it's like I did the Creed tutorial for Colt, and I'm so happy with that came out. I was like, yeah, I want like 50 of these. <laughs> now, uh, stop. Or well, that would be fine to start that if I hadn't failed three armies prior. So <laughs> that's that's the problem, right? But what I'm scared of is what if Eldar come out? You know, mm. then You're I'm fucked. screwed, absolutely screwed. So like, I got so annoyed at this that this week's dream is chaos, and I just can't bail on this. Like, I have to do it. It's the coolest one I've started, um, and I've been quite nice and strategic that I'm doing a badden, which is a different color scheme. So it's good yeah. old noggin, um, and then I've got thirty marines to do, and that is that's if I can do the thirty marines. I'll be absolutely fine with all the other projects I've stopped. I just need to finish 140k up because then it doesn't matter if I do a bit of Krieg, a bit of Sisters, because I have the ability to play a game and then I'll be less annoyed at myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just Eldar, please don't come out in the next <laughs> few months. Just give me a couple months so I can do some minors, please. All right. So there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot I want to pick up on just in that little. Hopefully, this is cathartic for you guys as well. It's just good yeah, to get it, like get it, get it off you, get it off your chest. Got but a you lot see, my chest about this. Yeah, it seems <laughs> at the minute, or it seems, it seems we started off talking predominantly about army painting here. Yeah. So, I think a few things I want to look at with that is is, and and uh, reminded me of it. Martin in the <laughs> chat obviously has just spent. He's saying he's just spent fourteen months painting almost nothing but his Lumineth army. Um, and he's admitted one of, the, one of the things that helps is that he's not a hobby butterfly. You know, I've always been jealous. I've said it before. I've been jealous of those people that are just obsessed with one army. Monoga hobbyists. You know, because again, that's the way. But I wonder if there's, is there, an, is there a middle ground in that, is there an army that, just off the top of your heads now, do you think there's certain armies that perhaps are better suited for people that do struggle with the monotony? So, let, let, you know, Marines is a good example. We always talk about how good Marines are to paint, blah, 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 blah. But actually, there's not a huge variety if you're painting a Marine army. Now, thankfully, there's not usually that many models, but I don't really know 40K nowadays. But, you know, 30K, there still is a lot of Marines you've got to paint generally you're going to be painting the same thing again and again and again so if you're not into batch painting you know and you're not into being realistic about your army painting it's, it's not going to work for you but are there certain armies you think so you mentioned it there andy with the fact that abaddon is or abaddon however it's been said now you are you know you've you've got a completely different scheme to be able to to use within that army mm. you know so i'm just thinking you know orcs you can paint you can generally paint orcs in a very different way. And I'm thinking of this, if, if this is my long term obsessive project as me right now, not as a not as a better version of me, as, as the me that struggles the same as you guys do with all this. It, it, what, it, where's that army that's going to allow me to just continually add to it? Um, mm. Spoiler, I don't think there is one for me because I, I want end points. I don't want to, I, if I'm painting an army, I want it done in a month or two. And a lot of that reason is because I want consistency in I, the army. Yeah. We talk about that a lot, right? I don't want to spend like like Martin has. If I spend over a year just painting one army, 
I would hope that I would be significantly better by the end of that. And I don't want my models at the end of that to look significantly better than the models at the start of it. And equally, I don't necessarily, and I've done this recently, I don't necessarily want to have to dumb down my painting if I feel I'm in a place to, where I can move on. Yeah. Um, it's a personal thing, isn't it? Right. Like we've all got different hobby goals. And I mm. think depending on your personality type and cross with your hobby goals, it's going to be way easier for others. Like I like, um, Age of Sigmar, 40k, Heresy, all the little games. I like them all. Some people like only Heresy mm. and only one Legion. So that's easy because they just chip away at that. So yeah, there's definitely like a different thing. And also if you're like, you know, I don't just do painting comps and I don't just do games. Like I think I like so much and variety is really cool. But at the same time, it's quite crippling because I'm like, really want a 40k army but I also really want to start some golden demon projects and that's what's hard for the old head so I definitely think that some people probably aren't at risk of this just because of yeah. their their personality types um and then maybe for those like myself and Rich that we need some ways of uh getting discipline I think me and Rich spoke before actually when he was doing a bit of butterflying that maybe he should do a chaos army of the four gods so he could do yeah. 500 points with four color schemes um which would be fluffy look cool and help with the the variety but i don't think it's actually the variety that i want it's the fact that you just think of something else like mm. you know say it takes for me i reckon an army doing it quickly six months right um, but how many ideas do you get in that time? And then how many new uh, products come out and get released? And it's uh, it's tough. So. Well, and also an army as a as a creative idea mm. is that, that's a big goal. Mm. You know, that's a that's a lot of work before you're going to see that idea realized. You know, it's not it's not one model. You know, it's not oh, I, I really want to paint a whatever custodies. And actually, you know, I don't have to paint him to I can paint him to display standard, not necessarily competition standard. And I can be happy and it's done and it's on the shelf and it, it, that scratch that itch. Right. It doesn't, yeah. have to go, it doesn't have to go any further. But yours, you're setting out where you're saying my goal is to create this amazing looking army. You know, it's, it, and this is why I say it, I think for me, six months is too much. You know, I, I got that thousand points of Cruel Boys done within the first month. That was the goal. I was like, if I can get them to that, then great. I will let myself do another thousand and that's it then i've got an army i can game with fantastic mm. you know i'm staring at a minimum now of four weeks between where i finish the last model from that mm. and when the new models are going to come out mm. and uh, ideally i'd have wanted the project done in that time yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's tough right that that and as you're saying six months you're going to come up with so many other great ideas and you're going to want to see them come to fruition yeah. Well, I spent um, two years on my ultramarines, mm. but I've got a different mindset now. But like at the time, I, I loved that army. I wanted to do heresy, and I was I was just good then. But something is different now, and definitely my personal situation is because we do Patreon and YouTube, which I love doing and I and I, I want to do. But it's just a matter of fact that I actually can't just paint my army. I have to do because who's going to want to watch me doing Luminous Spearman every week? I've done the <laughs> Luminous, I've done the Luminous tutorial, right? So now I can't really paint Luminous until after I've done this week's tutorial. And there's a kind of a catch twenty two to that because if I if I start if I start a project um, like for Patreon, then I have to stick to it, which is fantastic because that generally if I yeah. uh, if I do like a character or something, it always gets done because every week I put that out. So that's really cool because uh, I finish every project I start for Patreon. But mm. armies are hard because once I've done that tutorial, it's difficult to come back to it. So uh, I did my Sister of Battle tutorial, so can't really can't really paint some more of those. And uh, so that's the uh, the thing I'm tr I'm trying to find. But I'm hoping. That this chaos project is the one so uh, well i think someone had the answer in the chat alan 
uh, custodies, 10 models in an army. <laughs> That's a great point, Alan. But unfortunately, just three comments later, you've been shot down by Blue Shadow Dragon, who has been working on his custodies army since his mate Stag two years ago. So I actually did a custodies army and found it so unenjoyable to play with that I sold it. So um, all right, but you got it. So, but what was the what got it done? So let's look at let's look at so whilst whilst we're sticking to army army painting at the minute, you're struggling with project at the minute. What are some army painting products? So let's think about your your Silverneth for your AOS, which you did, and your Custodies, which you did. What got them done? Color scheme and volume of models and difficulty of color scheme as well. Um, but the, the Custodies were black so i i rattle can them black and then i whack some highlights on them and then they were metallics so they were very very fast um without a compromise in in a look because black purple and gold is a fantastic color scheme where there's you know i can't i couldn't do lumineth in black i mean i could but they've just got to be a light color <laughs> for me you know um and and that's yeah so yeah color schemes definitely uh, a thing i think mm. also when we were doing heresy when you were doing your um custodies like we've branched in the last like couple of years we've branched out as to what we actually want to do our models a lot more because back then all we did was heresy we mm -hmm. weren't interested in aos we weren't interested in 40k nothing else the only thing that we looked at from a, just from a gaming perspective was heresy Mm -hmm. So I think it was a bit easy, and also heresy being quite a finite space in that you can pick space marines that are a slightly different color, or you can pick custodies, or you know. Agreed. I think sometimes barriers or little borders to stuff make things easier. I agree. Yeah. For someone like me, if I've got all the choice and all the options in the world, my stupid brain will run with all of them and want to do all of them. Whereas someone says, "Well, actually, no, you've got this choice of like however many legions there are, like eighteen or whatever it is. They have to be one of those colors." Uh, pick one yeah because it's you know it helps you it takes away the my option to go mad and paint you know yeah. tons and tons of different things yeah i think that i think i don't actually like that many armies like there's a few right but aos we all know it's a meme that there's only one army for me in aos different form of elf but every if you're talking armies every army takes a long time for me that is just no matter what you choose it takes a while right so yeah. I, think, I think that's the problem <laughs> i think for me well my, my blood angels army that i've done one of the appeals for it was one i love blood angels i love the fluff i love the story i love the background but it was the mix of colors like we spoke about so you know i've got my candy red regular marines and vehicles but then i've also got the death company which are black which is more fun to paint for me as well and if i want to make them maybe a little bit better than some of the other units. I think it's a bit easier with black. And then also gold, if I ever want to do any of the sanguinary guard and that kind of thing. So that's how I would keep interested in my uh, mm. blood angels. I did mm. like, to start with, I did like 25 Marines, all candy red, and it was a nightmare. So I was like, right, I'll do a, a Redemptor Dread as a Death Company one, so it's black, so it feels different. And then switching back and forth between them. And that was successful because I got it to 1,000 points. And so yeah. happy with it. But then also, I... Like, Go on. Do you think you have to adjust your plan depending on like who you are? So like yeah. for you, you need to pick an army with a variety of colours. And then some people might need to pick an elite army for volume of models. Yeah. And then other people might need to do ease of scheme. You yeah. know, like this so like for example, Henry, you said Marines might not be for everyone because it's the same thing over and over. Mm. And for one person's personality type, that's going to be better. And then for someone else, it's actually, you know, that's against them. So I think that that's the, you do have to probably find a strategy for, Absolutely. for keeping focus. And it's going to be different for you. And what I've, I think one of the most important things to help to try and be a bit more positive about this is the, uh, the hobby group you have uh, around you. And I know that myself and rich recently actually played a game uh not in a house for the first time since yeah. you know whatever that thing was people used to get um 
And that totally changed my kind of mindset because I needed a reminder of why we bother doing armies because I just, I forgot. I was like, you know, gaming's all right, isn't it? No, actually, it is fun. And I think that that's important. You need little things to to keep you going and, and find some motivation somehow, right? Like, you need, I need to be reminded that gaming's worth it because for me, doing an army is really hard. It's hard to stick to. It's hard to spend the hours on it. So you do need a reminder. And I think that can come from the hobbyists you uh, surround yourself in and being with some positive hobbyists, I think. Absolutely. Man. I think I've got scribbled down here. One of the one of the things to ask is, is what, what regardless of the project, whether it's an army project, whether it's you're never going to game ever, but you still want to paint an army. I think there's a lot of people in those positions because you just mm-hmm. like it. Um, and whether you're, you're paying for a competition is, you know, what? Why are you doing it? What yeah. is your reason for doing it? And I think that sort of coupled into that something Rich was saying about we're bombarded with ideas, right, right now, and it's all the internet. And I get that the internet's fab, and it's given us a platform, and it's given us a living, um, you know, with, with what we're doing in the hobby. But the the time was you get inspiration from the White Dwarf you got once a month the novel that you were reading not listening to you know the the maybe the one painting show you got to go to a year or the games workshop or your local gaming club that that you would go down to and the chances are that you would only have a small sphere of of um a a small hobby sphere right and generally you were going to gravitate to like-minded people and obviously when that gets too much you end up with echo chambers and it's not such a healthy thing but when i think when it's a relatively small number it's only a positive right and i i found you know as, as someone who does this for work as well as their hobby and feels a responsibility to discuss certain things or help people achieve you know hobby enjoyment and things with it with our work and all the rest of it there it is getting pretty full on out there now with the, all the various media and the various factionalism and, and comments both ways you know positivity and 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 negativity that for me the only way i've been able to keep myself involved in the hobby personally not from a, a work point of view is to shrink that group way 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 back down and actually really only care about a handful of people's opinions and that's because those are the people that make me feel good. What, what's going on in the hobby? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think that's that's that key, isn't it? Is, you know, take a break if you need to. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, take a break and come back. But is is why are you doing it? You know, if you're doing it because you want 10,000 followers on Instagram, well, you're going to have to suck it up, aren't you? You're going to have to bring the discipline in and you're going to have to paint. You have to paint and you have to post and you have to do it regularly, you know, but that's your goal. Right. If, and that's fine. like if that is your goal, but at least go into it with your eyes open. Right. But I think there's that other side of that doesn't have to be the norm, does it? You know, it's still 100 percent OK to just paint and share it with a couple of mates. Yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, and, and generally they're all going to tell you it's nice and fun. If that's yeah. what you want, great. And if you want a bit more constructive criticism, then you find that group too. But maybe that group of people aren't the ones you go to to talk about the 14th great idea you've had that day for a different Space Marine Army or whatever. This you week's been, Yeah, this week's been, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? All right. So it's, uh, that's, that's, put, that's how I'm dealing with it anyway, personally. And, and, yeah. and it's, I'm getting shit done. You know, there's, there's, there's no two ways about it, you know it's been a successful sort of 12 months to me from a, from a hobby point of view um yeah. one of the ways i'm keeping that is holding myself accountable to certain people that i care about that i care about their opinion but it's as you said a minute ago andy it's games are fun right and actually if i if i am going to army paint then i want it to be with a view to playing with the army yeah. whereas in the past i was much more you know heresy was what i loved I played a handful of heresy games a year. I didn't care about the game at all, right? But I, what I cared about was hanging out with my mates, 
oh, drinking some beers or whatever. But I wanted armies. I wanted armies on my shelf to enjoy. I wanted armies to work on because I would read the novels. I would, you know, get excited yeah. about it. All I would talk about, you know, on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, all the groups I was in was heresy, heresy, heresy. You know, I just wanted to be completely immersed in it. It's nice to be immersed, yeah. isn't it? It, nice it is absolutely. Be, but so. it's, it changes, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, those, those, those sort of goals change. And for me now, the only army painting I want to be doing on on a traditional army, let's say. So your your typical bolt action, 40k, fantasy, flames of war, whatever. That 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 sort of size of army I'm on about. The only way I think they're getting done for me now is if it's for gaming. Mm. Yeah. Um, and that's that's influenced. Uh, if anything, that's helped me because it's I'm I'm not like you in the sense of I think I like every army out there. I genuinely think I'd be happy doing any of them forever. <laughs> and that really doesn't help. Right. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, and it's not so much, it's not so much butterflying that it causes. It's just that there's, there really isn't that one that's far enough ahead to, to shove me towards it. Yeah. Um, and I need that sort of initial shove. Um, and it's why I quite like these sort of c- c- um, communal projects that you can have with a hobby group. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a few of us at the minute that are talking about doing a, a, a bad ab um, project. And the nice thing there is, you know, everyone picks a chapter and does it. And actually, everyone's doing that at the moment. You, mate. You, you've got a, you've got to pick it right. You can't. Um, that some of that choice is took away from you. Yeah. Which I think, which I think, before, you know, if you if you're playing AOS with a couple of mates, you might say, right, well, Bob's doing order. So I really ought to do chaos, death or destruction. Agree, you know, yeah. and that kind of, and and again, I think that just goes back to that bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down. You know, it's sort of what why you're doing it, and if you're doing it for the likes, well, just go and find the most popular army and paint the shit out of it. You know. I think. I was, just, I was just going to say, do you think another aspect of sort of this is, um, especially in the last eighteen months, has been there's been no deadlines to work to, like mm. there's no. There's no hard date set in stone for events or gaming events or whatever event that you're you're sort of going to for these painting projects that mm. you kind of just procrastinate them. Or at least I, I think that's how I find anyway. Yeah, yeah. Without like, I mean, deadlines are deadlines. I mean, that, that was something that came up quite a lot from from the patrons. I think when we've chatted, right? Is is uh, and, and yeah, exactly as you're saying, whether it's golden demon or whether it's a gaming weekend because no one wants to be that person after 18 months of lockdown you're playing your first game after that with unpainted models right illegal it's illegal and i mean i imagine most people watching this won't be like that anyway because you're nerdy about painting um <laughs> but you know you, you but i bet it's happened like i, I imagine oh, yeah. lot, lots of people went into oh bit of furlough bit of lockdown right i'm gonna get 40 armies painted during this you know and then tournament right book my ticket night before you'll still be painting the bases right mm. yeah you know, in, the, in the, lock, the, lock, the lockdown was actually a bit of benefit for me because i was furloughed at the start of it so when i was furloughed i did have the time and i remember looking through all my armies and i think ideas and stuff and i one thing for me that i think is important is breaking the back of it so if you're looking at an idea for an army and i'm so i was looking at blood angels like right i need a good couple of squads of just marines that'll be the backbone of this army that i can then add to so for me that was the first goal because if you know if you're going to start a project and you paint the cool shiny new stuff first and then you've got to paint 40 grots or 40 skeletons or whatever that's the shit that's the bit that's going to get shit after a while regardless yeah, or of how the are. find that army where you love the basic bitch troop yeah so whatever it is that that element that basic element that you need a lot of or that you need to do first for me, that's that's the bit to kind of do because once you've got through that, I think it feels a bit real. Because like in my head, when I think of an army, I think of an old school army that's got a couple of troops choices, a couple of elites, maybe one or two heavies and a couple of characters. But the core of it was always two nice big groups of troops and a yeah. HQ. So if I'm doing an army and I do that first, for me, it already feels like an army that I'm then just adding to. Mm. So I've got the army, very, very small army, but that's the army, then I want to add to it. So, so for me, that's like keeping it, that helps keep it on track a bit. All right. So I, I, I'll challenge you on that because I agree with you 100 percent. Right. Yeah. But I, I challenge you on that. So you, you've got you have got your blood angels done. 
you've got that yep. that's that's been done in the last couple of years you've got them up to a thousand points you know yep. probably could easily have been two thousand points with a couple of less butterfly moments right probably, yeah. so if if you're saying that that's how you that's how you work on an army that's what, how, what helps you succeed and all the rest of yep. it being super critical could you look back on the last two years and say, actually, I haven't succeeded? I, I, I've, yeah. I've got my Blood Angels to 1K. I've got my Iron Jaws to, to 1K or whatever. Is that a time where actually now you go, fuck it, maybe on my next army, I'll do the opposite and I'll paint the the four character models, the big what? monster centerpiece, the whatever. I wonder, and I'm, I'm thinking about this now for me, like on my next project, you know, would that, actually mean that and one of my biggest issues is getting when i get close to the end of anything like a paint job a project whatever i'm inclined to rush it mm, yeah. right that's when the boredom really really hits in yeah. and i and th and that's the last thing you want if the final things to paint for it are the centerpiece models I would it so. maybe be better where if that bit of boredom and that oh fuck it right i really need this finished for this event oh, i've only got to paint 10 tactical marines fine I mean, that's, that's, right now. that's yeah. So for me, that, my that, right. see, I, I've i tried that before, where or I've done it something similar. Um, but for me, it can help to reignite like the fatigue of painting. So, for instance, my Iron Jaws, for example, worst idea for an army I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> I'm going to do a, a non-metallic metal weaponed army. I've got four edge highlights on every bit of model that there is i mean i'm really happy with the little army it's the best army i've ever done and probably the best army I ever will do i started it three years ago mm. and it's just got to a thousand points like because i picked it up and put it down picked up because it takes me i don't know two weeks to paint a brute mm. that's why it's, it's taken me so long it's horrible um but after playing one game with it i then went oh fuck that was actually really good fun because of the way it plays is really stupid you run across the board and punch people in the face mm. and it just it's really funny uh, but and since then I've gone right. Actually, I want to do a bit more. So I've done a couple of bits, little bits of scenery for me that edged on a bit more. And then after painting the basic troops, I treated myself and I built a new war boss from the Gordrak model. I put him on a base rather than on the dragon. Mm. And I want to paint that model so bad, badly now. So I think for me, doing the basic stuff first, then doing the exciting stuff. It, I mean, it depends. It can change. I think. But for me, I found with that project, it really did reignite. The, the passion for it because then I get to paint a cool model and I'm so experienced at painting the color scheme now I know it'll look amazing because I'm so just you know used to it but I do I do get what you're saying like tr you know get all the cool stuff first because then it will like, ignite the passion for it early that's it maybe I, it I, just keeps it maybe it keeps I don't know if it's right I'm just saying oh yeah I do, I, I, I do the same thing though I rush when I see the end coming I'm like oh I can paint something else now guilt free I'll get this I'll absolutely smash this last whatever it is out and then I can Guilt free, do something else. But I, I, I don't know so which one is answer. I've done multiple armies in multiple ways. I've got my undead army, and I was like, right, I need loads of skeletons. What's the quickest humanly possible way I can paint these? <laughs> I'll paint them glowing green, wicked. I'll paint 70 skeletons in one go, which is what I did. I was like, wicked, now I just have to paint the fun stuff. And it worked. My, you know, I've got a 1700 point or whatever it is undead army. Mm -hmm. But even that now, looking back, and this is something we speak to our friend Ben a lot because he's one of the fastest painters I've ever seen in my yeah. entire life. Yeah. He'll just get it done and he'll just do it. But he always and then gets painted as remorse, which is he'll get an army, it'll be finished, and then I'll go, wish I'd spent more time on that. Oh, you see, I don't think I get that be because of what I said earlier about liking them all. I yeah. almost feel like a bit, oh, wicked, great. I've done a Imperial Guard army fab. I never have to worry about that again. See, now I, I get it. <laughs> I really get it. I like even like with my Blood Angel, which is only a thousand points. Looking back on my original intercessors, mm. I look at them thinking, "We wish I'd spent a bit more time on them." You just can't know. You just gotta. You just gotta go. It's done. And I think that no matter what you do, it could be better. You could spend yeah. more time on every single thing. So it's taken me a while, but I think you just got to kind of get over it basically and yeah. like for me having failed so many army projects i just want it done and if it's fully painted and it's an army there's going to be some bits that are bad but i just want to finish something and i'm not going to go yeah could have done that better um yeah. but i was what you were saying henry about doing the cool stuff first 
that's the strategy I'm trying now. Well, and you I often, guess. correct me if I'm wrong, but you, and to slightly move it away from army painting, th that's often how you paint your display models, right? Is you will often paint the most integral focal point of the model very early on, right? Like like the face or, or whatever, because it yeah. you, because the whole thing rests on that, right? Yeah, so I think like I'll paint the face because uh, if I can't paint the face, I can't paint any of the model because it's the focus. And I just did that on Abaddon. And actually, like I was telling Rich that what I always loved since I was 10 is building an army around a special character, not just a normal one, a special character that has loads of fluff and background. And actually everything else just comes because I want him. Mm. Like I love Blood Angels when I was 10, so it was Dante. And I was obsessed with Asriel from Dark Angels. But I wanted Dark Angels because it had Asriel in. Mm. And then there was just stuff to go with him. And my hope is that doing a Baden, I'm going to do a job that hopefully I, I really like. And I'm going to be encouraged to do the troops because, yeah, I want to I see a Baden kill all of Rich's army on its own. That's the, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go up to Rich's favourite model and kill him turn one. That's the uh, motivation. <laughs> so I think a Baden's the man to do that for me. So, uh, <laughs> nice. But, like, yeah, I really, I really want to actually succeed in a project. And I think doing the the big important stuff first really well hopefully makes me uh, motivate to finish the rest so yeah maybe a different strategy whereas the Lumineth doing those spearmen made me want to uh, mm. not, paint, not paint Rhinox Hide ever again so yeah. that's true <laughs> right one of the things that I think I found quite interesting is I set the goal for myself by the end of this year to have a painted playable 40k army painted playable AOS army which I've got both of already that in itself, that I, if I want a game with those two systems, I've got painted like warbands for um, Underworlds and stuff like that as well. But having achieved that for both systems, that gives me a little bit of leeway as to if I want to pick something up and paint it, well, then I can. Yeah. Because I'm not really leaning at stuff from, um, I don't spend any time doing competition painting because it's not something I'm into at the moment. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just about what I want to paint for the fun of it or what I want to play with. So having those two things done that I can play whenever I want to, I think takes a hell of a lot of the pressure off of me worrying about getting stuff done because it's like well if i need to, if i want to play a game of a game of aos or a game of 40k i can do that tomorrow yeah. so it gives me that freedom and but i i distinctly remember before that when i hadn't had hadn't had got those two things done it used to stress me out a lot because i knew that i like andy said i failed on so many attempts to paint armies mm -hmm. um so much so that my undead I resurrected because it was so close to being done because I'd because uh, I painted it really like the, the 70 spearmen yeah they look okay from two feet away on a board they're kind of cool because there's loads of them but I really didn't like what, what the job I'd done on them but just persevering with that resurrecting it and the, like the hobby circle that I'm in pushing me to get that done because I had so much of it already getting yeah that was a a big win for me because then I thought actually well, if I do spend a little bit more time getting it done I'll actually then have a pretty big AOS I mean that's the game that we were playing or wanted to play it yeah so yeah that's yeah. that's as important to me and I was and I think that what's really a driving force for me is that you've got a thousand points of blood angels done yeah so, like a big motivational factor in me doing chaos in fact the kind of the most important one is I know when I've done a thousand points of that we can play a game the day I've done it. <laughs> like I can finish the last paint thing and we can play a game. So that's where the motivation is. And and yeah. we, I, when I was doing Sisters, we were saying we can't play goodies on goodies. Yeah. Boring. I need to play classic Chaos Mans against the good mm -hmm. miners. Um, and recently, me and Rich, there's been a few people that have got into the hobby uh, in our in our city, and that's been very very useful. To yeah. both of us to get motivation and, and enjoy the hobby, um, and, it, and it's really changed uh, the kind of the dynamic because now I'm again encouraged more because I'm like, well, if I do get this army done, I can play this person, this person, this person, and and then we can start to build a really good hobby group. But I think without that, then I'd, I'd keep failing or probably not even want to bother. So 
um, yeah, just going back to my point of how important it is, I think, to be around positive hobbyists and the past year and a half, it's been just on WhatsApp. Look what I've done. Mm-hmm. But I think now physical games are coming. That's just really important to sticking to it. So uh, yeah. but everyone's been good guys. So I need to do a bad guy. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. Well, I think, I mean, in the end, this really, this really did end up being almost one sort of smaller topic to do with sort of army painting so perhaps perhaps we'll touch on getting through competition pieces in a different episode perhaps we'll, we'll really focus on competition mm-hmm. painting um, but i want i want to have a look at what the uh what the patrons have been saying but we've largely before we move on to what those guys said we, we've largely touched really i think on sort of getting the inspiration side of things sorted and uh have, having the end goals in sight as sort of what what's what you find challenging or or what you find helps with it um and largely it's the boring answer is it's discipline right it's nearly all of this is just discipline if you want it find a way to make it work or sharp and do something else but that's not a very long podcast or particularly particularly helpful right because if it was that that simple we you know we we'd all we'd all be doing it but yeah you're right like surrounding yourself with, with with that positivity let's let's sort of super quickly let's take it down to the, the the actual physical painting of the models and stuff yeah. what are a couple of things that not stuff that hasn't worked for you but things that have worked for you stuff that you know lets you get a painting session done or a couple so, of sort of key go-tos so for me if i'm looking at an army project um if i'm looking at a thousand point army i know it can be daunting to do uh, a lot of it in one go but for me a really good session would be if I airbrush the the base color on everything all at once, because mm-hmm. that one that's going to make give me almost like a little snapshot of what the army is going to look like when it's finished, which is awesome because it's super motivating, and also it means that I don't have to worry about if I've got a two month or three month gap in between picking up units mm-hmm. to paint that I have to worry about trying to match that base color. Yeah. So that and also writing down write everything down, even if it's the same ten colors you use for every project you've ever done in your entire life. If it's an army recipe, write every single stage of it down 100% exactly what you do every time because you will forget. Or do a video for it so you can yeah, watch I was gonna say, it. Just record a video. Or, or just record <laughs> it. Yeah. Do that a lot. What do I do? Yeah, it's funny. All right, come on. Let's have a quick tip off you, Andy. What's the sort uh, of. For me, it's, it's a time slot every week. So, like, I, I think, I don't know what people think i do but i don't paint that much i really don't have that many hours to paint like genuinely and and it's so important that i do because i really i really want to paint but recently tuesday night it's been my sanctuary like i've i finished work earlier than normal and i don't do anything if people want to do stuff i go no i'm doing some painting for me (laughs) And a lot of that comes from I need to film for Patreon, um, which is nice because it does uh, force me to stick stuff and get stuff done. But I think of the last two months, like having Tuesday, I always paint on Tuesday. And then sometimes I might not paint again till Saturday or Sunday. But that time that I've put aside, even if it's two to three hours, is really important. And I think... uh, and I always go, right, this Tuesday session, I'm doing this, this, I'm doing this. And I think, yeah, that's that dedicated time slot um, for me. And I think that people with families and stuff probably need to schedule that in as well. So Schedule it in, yeah, great shot. Yeah. What about you, Matt? I think be realistic. <laughs> like in yeah. what you can actually achieve in the time that you have available. If you, you come up with, like, you can yeah having all these grand ideas is is great and grand but if you can't do them then they're not going to really get anywhere are they so just sort of i need to do that yeah. so what just set smaller goals almost. Small, smaller That's, goals yeah small achievable goals that you can get that like like dopamine buzz off of yeah i'm actually getting something That's done it. yeah That's the yeah one. I think also just on add, adding to that one though is having people around you that will call you out on it. So when mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to paint a four thousand point of this, have someone to be like, that's not going to work, mate. I mean, it's you get tell him he's dreaming. You literally get the most shit out of anyone. <laughs> like, 
Yeah. <laughs> like you, it got to a point where you would start a project and not tell us because you knew you'd get a telling off. <laughs> so <laughs> literally, literally, I, end of the week, I've done this. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> well, a couple of the patrons have got us some good suggestions as well. Um, so Rob's talking about a little bit like you were saying, Andy is is sort of sk- scheduling him. Um, so he sort of says, oh, I'll try and get 45 minutes in each night or, or, or whatever. Yeah. One of the things he's mentioned about is is having uh, like a good audio book. So like he's he's looking forward to getting to that hobby session because not only is he getting some hobby done, he's also li- listening to something he's, he's enjoying. Um, so I quite like that as well. And I think I think we pro- well, I know you don't. We talked about music a while ago, but I think music for me. But also that's slightly different, isn't it? To the idea of sticking some music on or sticking a show on in the background that you've watched a thousand times as a sort of company, I guess, more than anything. What Rob's actually saying there is you, you've almost got two reasons to want to get to your desk. Um, and I know I've been doing that with with sort of uh, generally Warhammer books, stuff that I'm not don't necessarily want to sit and read when in my reading time, but I would quite like to know the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's quite a nice way of keeping me at keeping me at the desk for a little while. Um, so yeah, getting a decent audio book, getting something like that on. Adam's talking about realistic deadlines and you know, sort of is a good motivator. Um, I think that's yeah, he's taken a year to get his recent titan he's painted dump but he said that at the start and he was he's chill with that you know so he's, he's not feeling that pressure um, because he's given himself that realistic sort of time frame uh time frame in which to do it nice one other physical one and, I, and th- th- this is how i imagine matt's work area is kind of dexter like um but rich is saying that sort of um i think rich and adam are, are saying is if you if at all possible have your hobby area sort of tidy and ready to go nice yeah. place to be right yeah so so if you get for whatever reason you get 10 minutes 15 minutes whatever you could literally just walk in and bang some paint on something you haven't got to spend that time sorting thinking doing all the rest of it you're just good to go um that plays into the, the one i would suggest which is something that's worked really well for me is just start painting mm. if after five minutes i'm hating it then I'll fuck off and I'll do something else. But nine times out of ten, if I get that five minutes in, I'll get half hour, an hour or whatever in. Yeah, you know, for doing it. And I think the vast majority of us, you know, getting more than an hour to hobby is is in one go doesn't really happen. You know, the, the older we all get, the more respons- responsibilities people have. You know, a, a, a hobby, a full hobby day is not something most people get anymore. You know, and that's okay, right? So you just you just sort of work a work around it. Um, I wanted to read Adam's one in full because I actually thought he had he had a load of really really good points. Um, there's loads of Adams as well. So this is Adam. You know, you are you wrote it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> number of little tricks that helps him a lot. Breaking different projects into monthly focus. So one month he works on 40K, the next he'll work on AOS, the next he'll work on Lord of the Rings, and then he goes back to 40K, AOS, Lord of the Rings, 40K, AOS, Lord of the Rings, um, or, or just multiple projects. Um, so I guess the idea behind that is that you get stuff done and you then have a long enough gap so you get excited about going back to it. Like me and my Lumineth. Um, right. <laughs> but that would work if you paint a Lumineth model in the next month, right? Otherwise, it will be more like... Am I allowed to do a tutorial on it again? Uh, well, you find something. You'll find something to do on it. Don't worry. Um, another tip is resisting the hype train. Have a word with yourself, Adam. Nonsense. No one can do that. The hype train is out of control. <laughs> Talk about self-control and discipline. Here. Does, doesn't doesn't exist. Um, one final trick is knowing how you like to paint. I think this is really cool. So if you hate batch painting, don't do it. <laughs> like do a mo- do a model at a time it won't be optimal but you're getting but you will be getting models finished even though you're getting them finished slower you're getting them finished and you're enjoying yourself so yeah, therefore you might rich, finish it right but this is it right it's it's, it's an interesting take right because you do, do i end up with within one week i end up with 40 marines that are air- airbrushed and blacked out details and then six months later, they're in the same condition. Yeah. 
or do I end up, you know, one week I get one marine painted? It's it's interesting. I think I think that is cool. Like just there's no right or wrong way, is there? And I and I think that's that's something we find more and more with painting and, and hobbying is there's, there's there's a lot of people out there who will try and tell you this is the way to do it when actually what they mean is this is the way I do it. Yeah, um, definitely. And it's you know be 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 chill about it. You know, there's no. Do you, think, yeah. uh, do you think to be successful in my chaos project, maybe mm. I should aim hey, them all for consistency and then do individuals? Is that what you're saying? Nah, you'll mm. you'll be fine with it. I've got a good feeling about this one, mate. That's what I need mm. positivity. Mm. You'll be fine. Good, good I think also like with the the uh, things like Kill Team coming up, yeah, it's a really good way of scratching an itch. So like instead of going, I'd love a Black Templar's army with like fifty Marines and vehicles and stuff. So like, well, actually, a Kill Team's five Primaris Marines or whatever it is. Like that's such a good option now. Yeah. I think completely so. agree. Yeah, that goes way, way back to what I was saying <laughs> earlier about if I'm painting armies now, they are getting painted for gaming Huge. with. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for me, but that doesn't mean I don't still want to paint high level army projects if yeah. that makes sense i don't want i i do not want to paint display or competition models at the moment i just don't have that in me but equally i don't just want to paint what are for my level of ability suboptimal models yeah. or suboptimal paint jobs i need something to to enjoy and be proud of and all the rest of it mm. and that's where exactly what you're saying there it's that's where your skirmish games whatever scale they are that that's where your skirmish games come in um yeah. you know and there's so many good ones gw obviously has a bunch but there are it's a brilliant way as well to experience other manufacturers mm. you know they almost certainly another manufacturer is never going to have the same quality and breadth of models that games workshop does but that's okay right yes. if you only need 10 models to play the game with it's fine thank you or even if like it could just be rule sets so like planet 28 things like that have a great rule set that you can implement any model from any range into so i think yes yeah, skirmish is 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 definitely becoming and a lot of board games now it seems we we seem to have this mm. hybrid don't we of of board game slash miniatures game you know the playing pieces now are, are being sculpted by some of the best best sculptors in the industry and stuff so yeah. you know that's that's quite another another nice sort of self-contained or project where you, where you can although i don't know would i want to push myself on painting those when i know they're going to get handled and handled and handled oh and handled? yeah you know if you do like when i did uh when i'm doing like underworld's warband i did one mm. and i really spent some time on it it was amazing having that painted against like when me and andy were playing his scathe against my uh goblins on wolves it looked mm. amazing yeah yeah let's uh, see what's happening i assume this is mike in the chat possibly talking from his work account um, how often do you get part way through a project, be that a competition piece, a gaming piece, whatever, and chin it off because you're not happy with it? Well, behind this blind, I have several Tupperware boxes full of those models just waiting for the buyer strip. Um, pretty sure, Rich, you had to buy an entire shed, didn't you, to deal with? Yeah. Uh, like, re like, even like genuinely realistically. 50% of what I do gets chinned off. I want to give you a hug, mate. Well, so it, does, it does mean I have some quite nice little display pieces. So you know, I always do random marine chapters. I've, I've got I've bought, bought a little plinth for the 10 different sort of different like chapter or um, legion marines that are all finished that I'm going to put on a little plinth and just have butterfly on a little plaque. They do look fantastic. And actually, fantastic. do you know what? They're all brilliant and they look really <laughs> nice. They look really nice together. So fair play. <laughs> last um last Patreon comment I wanted to, to talk about uh, was by Mitchell. Um and this this one resonates with me a lot, and this is what's made me so passionate about helping people learn different tools for army painting, you know, so they can pick what works for them. Um it's in, his biggest challenge is being like hyper focused. So he's like each mini I paint. I feel I have to put in 110% effort and have to make it incredible, even if it's not a particularly exciting model. Um, and I suppose that goes back to what you're saying, Matt, about realistic goals and stuff, right? Yeah. Separate mm. separate things, mm. right? So, like, like, for me, at the moment, I want an army done, and then I want to remember the competitions are coming, but have 
different styles of things and this project I'm going to be chill on and then occasionally it's nice to be unchill and, and strive for your best but sometimes just don't do that I feel like a hell of a lot of that comes from not not specifically you Andy just just what Mitchell says a hell of a lot of it comes from this the way that we're expected to present and share our miniatures now on online right and yeah, therefore you're getting judged you're getting judged by you're putting it out there to be judged by potentially untold amounts of people right yeah. and i i find it like i've i've never been i've never been particularly fussed about a personal hobby account in that sense like i love work don't get me wrong we've chosen to put ourselves out there and, uh, and do all the rest of it but i don't really like when i finish painting a model my first place to go and share it is in my messenger group or whatsapp group mm. or whatever with my mates it's not to post it mm. online but i think i think there is that there for, for a huge majority of of people is that pressure and i i do wonder sometimes like you know as I, people oh you need to post more you need to post more but i'll post a model up and i'll go what why why do i want to post this model because it's not i'm not demonstrating that i've painted something to the best of my ability is this stranger going to judge me negatively on a piece of work which isn't isn't my best nor and of course you shouldn't give a fuck what anyone else thinks about it but it it's there there's no getting away from the fact that if you're going to use the internet as a way to share your models that must be having an impact on people right and i think you yeah. see it a lot when people always write that slightly apologetic thing underneath when they'll post a model up you know they'll be they'll be overly self-deprecating about it because i think they're worried about people think oh well that's not as good as the last thing you did move on whereas yeah. if you take those models and share them with your mates at your hobby night or at your game night or whatever they're always going to be positive about mm. it they're always going to be happy to see that you've painted something you know and as it goes it's one of those things like when we when we've run painting competitions and another adam in the chat asked when the next one is um, we'll have mpo news soon adam um is people say oh, I'm, I'm not going to win at this competition that shouldn't stop you going and entering right because no, because of what that can not just what it can do for your, your own personal painting progress, but also what it brings to that community. You know, you might not, I might see a model painted far worse than I can paint right now. I'm not being a dickhead about that. You know, everyone's got people are better and people are worse than them. But there might be an idea on that model that's really cool and yeah. inspires me to go off and, and, uh, and do something more. Yeah. So sorry, this has got a little bit rambly, but it goes back to what Mitchell says. It's you know that feeling of having to put 110 percent effort into into every model. You you just don't, do you? Nah. Like it's, it's and and if if that's the way you are, Mitch, well maybe you have to look at what uh, one of the Adams, many many Adams, was saying. In one of his comments was understand that about yourself, and perhaps just start only painting really good models. You know, if if you've got to paint 20 models to be in a unit maybe that's just not the right project maybe that's not the right no. army for you to, to to enjoy your hobby with i think yeah, you, see, okay. don't you, you know old forums you get oh what army should i play and people would be like oh what's the background you like or what do you want to do this maybe a lot more of it should be about you know what, what, for you. what are you like as a you know as a hobbyist what are you like as a painter what do you like painting you know what yeah, do you like seeing on the table? analysis before you do any project <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe that's a bit you need a, a full psychological analysis you need space rings yeah it's it's all about like balance you know you've got to like you said if if you go right i'm going to paint a four thousand point um krieg army to the best of my possible ability all gold and demons well you're not because you're going to be painting 200 yeah. uh, infantry you know and maybe that's not realistic or if you're like okay i want to paint something to a much higher standard it's like okay that's fine it just needs to be a bit smaller so like my orcs are painted to a way higher standard than I would ever normally suggest to anyone for doing an army, but I'll keep it at 1k. It gets to 1k, it's done, do something else. So where you've got like undead, paint 4,000 points of them because it takes 10 minutes. <laughs> um, John's just saying in the chat that he's saying, oh, I think sharing of work is really important, especially for those of us without local hobby groups to be a part of. Yeah. I 100% yeah. I agree, John. I, I certainly wasn't saying don't share it. Or, you know, the, the overwhelming impact of social media on our hobby has been positive in my opinion um, and this this was very specifically sort of what i was talking about was this perhaps this idea of valuing your own work based on what many random people might say about it 
sometimes that's going to be demotivating. Yeah, you know? especially if it's a model that you really like and you've spent time on and you really enjoy it and then you post it and it doesn't get as much of a positive response as maybe other things that you've posted, it can be quite disheartening. Yeah, exactly. It can be demotivating, right? Mm. And that, and that's that's yeah. a shame. That is, a, a, I guess, a byproduct of, of, of the way, you know, it, it's yeah. gone. But yeah, and I think it's, it'll always just do this when it? it'll contract and expand contract and expand and you know and, and it's it's in the early days it was forums that's how we shared stuff then it became facebook then we got twitter and instagram um now we've got um tiktok you know there's a lot of hobby going on on there um discord you know and maybe it's going to shrink back down again you know and 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 so i think it's just uh again it's surround yourself with the 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 group or the group of people that keep you moving forwards, keep you happy, keep you enjoying the hobby. Um, nice. And that's not just some hippie, you know, <laughs> comment. It, it, it works. That's how you get shit done, right? Yeah. Uh, well, that's how we've managed to get stuff done. Um, Definitely. You know, it always comes back to that same couple of people I've known for donkeys. You know, if Trev thinks it's cool, fine by me. <laughs> you know job job done that type of thing um but i'm just conscious of the time guys so i want us to that was a nice so, closing sentence you know, it's, you know. the, it's always a risk in it this topic mate that you end up sounding a bit fucking holier than now and i know that like we don't know shit but we've painted just quite nerds. a lot of models between us um, we're putting our hands up and saying know. we're we're awful yeah, mate. yeah. Worst. <laughs> yeah. so we're, we're we're saying why and <laughs> discussing <laughs> So it's funny. Mike's like, I get more likes for something that's converted than plastic than I do when it's painted. Sometimes yeah, it's a bit of time. Absolutely, absolutely, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing like posting a work in progress space marine conversion that gets ten times as many likes as your developed from the ground up model that's, that you've worked on for two years and spent thousands of pounds on. All you've got to right. Sacrifice so, them into the algorithm for that. <laughs> that's it, right? Um, right. Let's move on to the last segment. I think don't mind yeah. guys close that way um so close out the show as normal i'm going to take a look at what the paint cultists have been up to uh, we've got a hashtag hashtag paint cultists follow it. it's on all the social media but it's largely on instagram give that ta uh, tag a follow if you want to see a huge breadth of hobby work you've got lots of different styles lots of different abilities lots of different game systems you've got busts you've got large scale you've got small scale um it's a really fun way of finding new painters new models and that type of thing and all we do on the show is pick a handful every show. We just have a little matter about them and sort of why they why they've caught our eye. Um, the other guys don't know what ones I pick, and we'll just throw them up. So, what you got first, Matt? Nice. Wow. Infinity. So, what we were talking oh. about skirmish games. I know Infinity has tickled mine and Andy's pickles for a long time, um, mm. and they've just released their first plastic model, not this one. Um, does this yeah. finally finally mean we might get plastic and resin infinity models? Because too, little, too late. <laughs> uh, and it looks really bad quality, to be honest. I don't want to be The naked. plastic one, it does look a bit. I saw, look a bit and I'm like, come on, guys. So I love infinity. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and this is why we love infinity, because it's just badass models like this. Um, yeah, that's great. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, I just thought it was really, really cool. I like, I like so, the fact there's so many colours on it. Um, I, color, right? like, yeah it is like it's doing the phase phase thing sure. isn't it, on, on, on its armor um so yeah nice one james at hobbycraft and beyond i wonder if that's hobbycraft as in the I reckon that's a uh, shop hobbycraft and beyond. UK. <laughs> um right what's that next man well oh, this, cool. this is right so this account had posted quite a lot of stuff over the the last few weeks a real nice variety of things um and i don't know whether they're things to go in this or not um, but as I understand it, this is um, done as like a, a bookend type thing. No way. But to sort of sit in the middle of your books on your bookshelf and just be like a little vignette, awesome. a little seat. Yeah. Um, That's cool. But I, between I, it's just it's just lovely, you know. I, I yeah, if that is what it's for, if I've understood it correctly, I'd love to see that bookshelf. Um, mm. you know i think it'd be really cool and i'm gearing myself up to do a lot of scenery painting over the next 12 months so uh seeing some nicely executed like this is always always good yeah so yeah just it's, it's definitely the start of a new 
level, isn't it? When you walk through that door. Yeah. That's uh, checkpoint. Yeah. Press press E. Remember you'd, you'd have to have a pretty. <laughs> You'd have to have a pretty impressive uh, bookshelf cabinet and also books. You couldn't put like Mary Berry's Cakes book next to it, could you? You would, though. Don't know, mate. Be a juxtaposition. Your favorite book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look like you're sat right in the next, you know, 101 things to do with lentils or whatever, right? It's true. Now, yeah. yeah. Um, S- Smallholder's Guides to Christmas. <laughs> Farmers <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> Love you, Rich. Um, what's the next slide? Matt? Oh, look at this beauty. Wow. This is an old Chaos Familiar model. Really? Um, I just, yeah, there's, if you look back in the 90s, might even be late 80s, um, but back around that time, they did so many of these teeny tiny little uh, Chaos Familiars. Um, and, they're, and they're still character for Scops. I don't know the exact date on this one. Um, it is a bit like stab grot right um mm. and it's just it's lovely nice nice little bit of nmm just cute um as you'll know if you watch the show I'm, I'm a sucker for the sort of critter type things so <laughs> so this this does me um but as i say yeah go and check them out on the uh, 1989 thank you martin it's the oldest kit games workshop still sells seriously they still sell that there you go. yeah you get a little pack of familiar still really wow. yeah, go check them out again oh, wow. this is why hashtag paint cult is so good see learning every is a school day um what we got up next matt i think there's a couple more there are. Oh. Oh. Got space marine in right fuck yeah um and it's Azrael. it he's must been, be Azrael. he's been right? turned to chaos hey you, you what <laughs> you oh is this one of them no, it's not, is it? It's not. That's just that's just OSL off the plasma. Matt's trying to be funny, saying oh, okay. paint okay. the child man's. But they're good. <laughs> At now. least you didn't bite Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought he might have been one of those. Have you seen the the Alpharius Omega thing yeah. that's been going on the last six months or so? Yeah. Where they sort of paint those phased Alpha Legion models, don't they? Half and half. Um, sweet banner. But it's just a sweet model. I mean, any Azrael right. gets gets a tick, but um, it's easy. nice. I've, I've not seen someone do it based off this sort of base model. It's like a, um, I actually think it works really well. Primaris scale banner for a Primaris scale marine. Yeah, <laughs> bring yeah, back yeah. those back. That's it. Banners. Bring back yes, bring back back flags. Definitely. God, yeah. Is it off the bike? That is it off the Deathwing bike? Oh, uh, good shout. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. And it's a Mephiston, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Painting's really good though, like the purple lightning's really mm. cool, and the little gold ball is really nice. It's, it's really a nice cool. composition as well, isn't it? They made like, very good. I, I I think this would look more striking on a back black background, mm. um, just because yeah. of That's that composition. Cheating, Henry. Yeah, no, no, but I'm talking about it from a from a composition point of view, not from let's look at the painting. That's wicked. He's done the right thing. He's not fanning around with it. But I do feel like if you saw this on a on a black or one of them, what's them ones Rich Gray often uses? The weird like smoky ones. The airbrushes, them I think. Just just give it give it a bit of um yeah a bit of arty farty. I think it look really really yeah work. It, it deserves it. It's a cool Great model. Kick, Stilo. Um, and I think got one more. Have we met? We got one more. Got yeah. One more. yeah. Uh-huh. Literally sure. to almost like to prove your point. That how much better does that look on a darker background? Oh, look, we could talk about backgrounds and photos in, in another episode. Like, me and Andy have always said black backgrounds are cheating, but there is a place for them. Um, and, it, you know, and it's, it's and I use them a lot. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a different discussion. Um, partly, I love the Skaven models when they got the remake. Yeah. I love this model in particular. It was the first ever Age of Sigmar paint job I did. I did this the, the weekend Age of Sigmar released. I painted it very similarly to this, which is why it struck me when it did it. I think it's probably the last time I did OSL as well. Um, you did it the other day in life. And I just think, I just, it's just lovely. Like, you know, it's uh, no no other reason. I just think it's it's a spot on paint job for, right. for the model. Yeah. Um, and I bet, I hope that person's really chuffed with it. Yeah, it um, should be. It's great. I'd, I'd love it if that was sat on my shelf. Right I now. really like Skaven with OSL. 
uh, like it works to them right so yeah. right super yeah. fluffy it's like yeah great like, army yeah definitely and that model as well i remember i was island of blood that was the yeah. box yeah yeah i remember buying that box first thing i built out of the box was that model yeah. and yeah that's like an, a starter kit one yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the him and the one I, giving it I, I the most muscular. I, versus Skaven. I mean, I forget there was another army in that box, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Colin asking in the, in the chat, is a black background cheating? Well, we'll have to address that question on a it's future. A joke. It's a joke, episode, but yes. Um, oh. Right, is that it for slides, man? There's one more. There's one more. I'm terrible at counting. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. And this, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember... What the, the account said about it, but it was something along the lines of he he will do a random mini like this to practice stuff on, so it like won't be like a typical miniature. So you might print something or buy something that's weird, just have a play around with different techniques. That's super um, cool, and I quite like that because again, it's a little self-contained thing. There's no temptation to do anything more with it, um, mm. and I just thought it was is kind of you know pretty it's metal. Brutal. Um, Ooh, like I need to find the holy water. I go, yeah. Just, <laughs> I mean, what? just needs to needs to go on a t-shirt for uh, for some band, definitely. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. It should be your like cult of pain Christmas card. That's it, right? But I also pick these generally when I flick through. I'm I'm pretty random with it. If it sparks more interest, I'll click it and I'll send it through to Matt. But one of the things I wanted to do with these five was to just illustrate the breadth of minis you might see. Um, yeah. if, if if you follow in that tag, um, I could obviously fill it with Space Marines. You know, no We've problem. We've already done that. Ed. Yeah, but there's yeah Maybe exactly go that. back and watch the Space Marine episode. But there's um yeah there's a ton of great stuff on there, and there's you know there's more and more going up each week. So um so yeah, give it a follow. Now that is it for slides, isn't it, Matt? It is. Yes. Nice one. So comes to the end thanks very much for sticking with us everyone i know we've gone on a little bit there i didn't, didn't really know how long that episode would go and um, we just sort of wound us up and uh, see, see what we could get chatting about so i hope you managed to glean a couple of little helpful things from that um if not what are you still All doing right. listening but you know you're welcome I, I know i certainly got a few things jotted down i was particularly impressed by some of the patreon uh, chat in there um so speaking of patreon if you do want to reach out to us at all we're on all the usual platforms facebook twitter instagram patreon all the rest of it um if you want to support us hit our patreon hit the like button comment all the rest of it you know what the deal is with all that sort of stuff um thanks ever so much for the chat tonight it's been really nice having all of you in there uh, and there's a lot of, of really useful comments going on there and i hope you guys are are finding we're starting to get a little community going now what we 14 episodes in or something now 15 episodes in hopefully you know it's uh it's a nice little nice little crew starting to uh starting to form and we really do appreciate you all being on there um thanks to you three being on as ever wonderful let's not leave it three weeks let's try and get the next one out a little bit yeah. quicker than that um and as ever thanks to all you guys for watching whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching it back later and we will see you in a couple of weeks bye, bye.